Hello, uh, welcome. Uh, good to have you here, Adriano. Maybe, uh, uh, how you doing, man? All good, good. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, it's great, great to have you here. Tell me how, tell me what what you've been doing the last the last years. Talk a lot, talk a little bit about this Internet of Things, of things, and what it's about for you. What's yeah, just a little bit about that. Sure. Um, well, um, actually, I I got into this topic while uh, doing my masters uh, in business in uh, Nuremberg University. And I actually uh, wrote my thesis about IoT and sensor fusion, um, and that's how I got into this topic. I am actually a lawyer from a profession, and somehow uh, did my uh, master's in business and, and ended up like doing technology, specifically IoT, uh, while uh, yeah, being uh, at university. Uh -huh. uh, then I got uh, my first job um, also uh, in the IoT kind of sector uh, for a company that provided uh, software and hardware to uh, track um, cars uh, or identify cars or vehicles electronically mm -hmm. for traffic management systems. And currently I'm working at a company that does also IoT for uh, the automatization and digitalization of energy consumption. Oh, nice, nice. So in your own words, what's IoT and what's like the average person that's not Okay, a company with trucks. What what exactly is that? How can that's they relate a great to that? Question. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Actually, IoT. I would uh, basically uh, define IoT as uh, the digitalization of physical objects. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, um, uh, giving a, a, an identity, a virtual identity to any physical object. Uh, it might be a, a an item, a thing. Uh, it also, maybe a human, animal. Mm -hmm. Um, anything uh, that um, actually communicates to the internet through sensors and sending data mm -hmm. to act on that data. You, you think, for example, like, um, I mean, the general thing people think, like, when you put in, like, technolo giving technology, like, or, like, this internet, put in, like, let's put in different words. For example, like, this Amazon Echo, for example, that basically start controlling all the house and the idea is this also to, I mean, uh, you think all this data going back and forth, it's like people can really benefit from that or is what, what's exactly it like? I think there are definitely um, uh, use cases where people, consumers and companies can benefit yeah. from IoT. Uh, but of course, uh, it's a good topic you mentioned. Yeah. Um, Privacy and security is yeah. one of the main issues in IoT. Um, and that's something many companies uh, need to acknowledge and be transparent about mm -hmm. that uh, as to how uh, which um, how many uh, data you are gathering from people mm -hmm. or collecting, um, which data and what are you doing with that data. I think, so, I think that, that's, a, that's a good point, right? Because, I mean, for when we think about data, we like someone that is not working like specific technical thing you would think okay let's say my social media data okay everything or my email data everything i have written down but i mean this is all your consuming information right like let's say you have a sensor for your if you have an air condition at home and you how many times you use it this is also data right this is something also like companies can learn from it correct uh learn and act on it and um, now there's like um, this concept of big data mm -hmm. and basically IoT enabled and, uh, uh, big data. And now it's, for example, um, 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 an issue that many companies don't know what to do with the amount of data they gather. Mm -hmm. For example, an oil company uh, just uses 1% of the data and oil rig uh, um, is capturing, uh, for example. So. Um, and usually the companies are not doing uh, that many things with that data, maybe just controlling the the, um, the facility, but not at acting on that, like uh, doing um, um, predictive maintenance or optimization of processes. So um, yeah, like everything, any sensor can gather data. We have this concept of big data, but um, uh, making sense of that data is the next step. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in what other sectors you think this would be pretty big in the next five years? Like people don't think about it. Like, 
I think um, the sector where IoT is going to grow the most is going to be uh, factories. A factory. So basically, it's going to be B2B uh, mm -hmm. businesses where uh, factories are going to uh, install sensors uh, in their production plants or retrofit machines uh, mm -hmm. with sensors uh, to start tracking uh, the assets throughout the entire process um, mm -hmm. of the uh, value chain. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where uh, the most value could be um, um, seen in the long term because mm -hmm. that would also help uh, the products uh, and the consumer goods um, uh, be uh, less expensive I and see. make the products cheaper because you will optimize the processes mm -hmm. and you will then um, I have a lean manufacturing process that would enable then um, uh, um, for the item uh, that you are producing to cost less mm -hmm. and that could be also translated into a less exp expensive product uh, for consumers. Oh, I see, I see. I think, I mean, in, who do you think is leading the market with that right now? That's a, yeah, um, um, yeah, great question because um, I think many companies are um, doing um, um, or offering many IoT yep. systems, but uh, because the uh, technology is so new, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, not new in the in the theory, but new in the practice. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot see any leader now, but because there are many uh, businesses, uh, business models uh, uh, being um, created from scratch right now, mm -hmm. and um, it's difficult to see um, uh, a leader in the market. Right now, and, and would you think like in general and how it evolves, the level of regulations of data protection could slow down this? For example, in Europe, that is quite strong for data protection. Do you feel it? Do you see that in your own field? Like how fast you can go? Definitely. So um, uh, in Europe, we have the uh, GDPR mm -hmm. that uh, is uh, worldwide known, and of course, uh, there are some. Uh, steps uh, that companies have to undertake to start uh, even like processing data. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there are many documents uh, and processes and uh, technical and organizational processes that have to be uh, in place in every company mm -hmm. to be able to process data on behalf of uh, uh, the clients. Mm -hmm. So um, and that, of course, it's a um, 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 factor that mm -hmm. would slow down a bit the process, but uh, I think it's a necessary uh, um, step because that would create trust uh, with the cons uh, with mm -hmm. the with the client, with the end customer, mm -hmm. uh, as to how uh, their data um, is being um, um, gathered, collected, mm -hmm. saved, uh, stored, and processed. I see. I see. And I mean, in general, you're talking right now B two B. So, in terms of big data what the average person could see about it because i mean coming back to this like the individual okay we're getting all this data what can i do from it or maybe just from someone else right like a point of comparison huh? yeah so i would say uh well there are many things um uh, mm -hmm. but uh that could affect uh, a person i would say uh firstly um uh, health mm -hmm. so tracking um diseases uh or uh um main um, uh, health KPIs in the bodies, for example, blood pressure mm -hmm. or uh, heart rate and identifying um, before something happens mm -hmm. that there is an issue with the health of someone. Uh, so, doing also like, um, so, so you um, think that would be like someone have a device installed and is giving data to their physician, okay, blood pressure, I don't know, blood uh, sugar levels, and different aspects they've been measuring and giving the data like real time. So if the doctors say, hey, there's something wrong in here, maybe you should come here. Okay, I mean, that's interesting. That's... Yeah, and that's already happening, for example, with uh, smart watches mm -hmm. that they already track uh, some of these um, uh, KPIs. Mm -hmm. And um, it could be even uh, um, uh, further. Um, Deepened, deepened in uh, um, what other KPIs can be tracked. Yeah, I see. Okay, I mean that's pretty interesting. I think. I mean, I'll be. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, to to, to what extent you want to be part of it? I mean, I guess also for taking care of kids, right? Let's say have a, like special 
um, requirements or or even older people that may not be so cognitive aware will be like a good idea to be controlling this. Um, in what other aspects you think about besides health? Is there anything else you think is... Besides health, I would say also our um, in-home for mm -hmm. smart appliances. For example, uh, uh, fridges can be installed with sensors and, and to track uh, uh, temperature inside the fridge, mm -hmm. uh, reduce the temp temperature in uh, some cases, or some um, weight sensors to um, see if the fridge is missing items, for okay. example. I know I it sounds very futuristic, and order yeah. them automatically. Uh, it sounds very futuristic. Connected to uh, your Amazon account. <laughs> probably. <laughs> that's crazy, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, that's something, yeah, you see that with Alexa, for example. Yeah. Um, there was like this uh, uh, kind of like weird case uh, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. where Alexa was witnessing uh, uh, basically or hearing that um, husband was um, abusing of the uh, wife. Oh. Uh, And uh, Alexa recognized, uh, okay, something is happening here because uh, uh, the woman is screaming. Uh, it, it sounds like someone is hitting a person. Yeah. And Alexa called automatically 911. And oh. 911 came to that house uh, yeah, before it was too late or like any other uh, uh, or the situation escalated. So, oh, yeah, really? you yeah. have this, this, this kind of cases where you see, I mean, this case was good uh, mm -hmm. that Alexa called 911, but uh, Alexa called 911. Automatically, automatically, without any uh, permission of anybody. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the, the the question as to which extent uh, you allow um, the, the devices to act on behalf of you. Yes, that's a fine line, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it goes against privacy, right? It could also just be in anything else, right? Yeah, could be like privacy a privacy is a big factor. Yeah, I mean, it could also be like a TV show that was open that it was doing, showing the sounds and then. Yeah, and Could then the police, yeah. and then the police comes, and both of them are sitting down in the kitchen, like watching in the in the living room watching TV, and they're like, "What?" Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> uh, this yeah, it's, it's a fine line, right? But like, yeah, I mean, that's and how how often is that? Like, I mean, I guess that goes against many breaches of privacy. Is that like, was there a sue? Someone sue Amazon for that, or is that like, you think? I don't know, but uh, that's a very uh, yeah. Uh, I think it depends on um, um, also on what users opt in uh, oh, or opt okay. out when they uh, buy or subscribe to a certain buy a device or subscribe yeah. to a service. And um, usually, um, so this is um, like these thousand myself, <laughs> these thousand paragraphs that no one read, <laughs> <laughs> including myself. I just click agree and everything. Yeah, right. Like I read my terms and agreements. Uh, move forward. Yeah, done. Install whatever. And sometimes uh, uh, we all agree to um, yeah, things that we actually would not like to have. Yeah. Um, but we just do it because, uh, yeah, nobody's going to read, <laughs> like you yeah, said, yeah. thousand lines and, and accept everything. Or, and if you opt out and you say, okay, I don't want, then you don't have the service. Then yeah, exactly. Um, it's like uh, a all in or all, all out, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, these things is like... They they ask you for something for the whole thing that I have nothing to do. Like I can give yeah. you an example. I'm not so related to this, but like I was I have a meditation app and I was looking at the different meditations they have and it's supposed to be free. And then I click one and then they asked me for my email. And then I just gave my email and it's like, no, I want your work email. It's like, no, why? Fuck it. <laughs> I'm not like I give you my work email. Like what it has to do with meditation. Like, of course, I delete the app after that because I thought this is, I mean, yeah. They just want to take your data from. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's and then they bombard you with newsletters every yeah. every every day. And honestly, like now that you mention it, in the last week I have I had unsubscribed to maybe twenty twenty five mm -hmm. newsletters okay. that I had subscribed and I didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, because I just kept receiving them every day and it's like okay now I have to do something because uh, too many notifications were yeah. driving me crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, right? This is just getting in the limit of all our privacy yeah, things. Yeah, and services I didn't even remember I, sus I subscribed or I don't know where they even got my email. Like maybe through those apps, like you said, like, oh, I put my email, I gave my email to some app and I didn't delete the app, but the emails was stored somewhere yeah. and I don't know. And they got 
to my email somehow yeah. and then yeah then bombarding me with stuff yeah and, and, they, and they sell the emails to some other groups and then like what are you going to do with that <laughs> yeah that, yeah that's another issue like uh, selling private information yeah. Um, yeah and 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 for for yourself at home how are you like getting into this digitalization do you have anything you can share or if you I oh, have to, man. but like <laughs> that's a, a, a dilemma because although I uh, I work in the technology industry yeah. and I, I really believe um, in um, the good that it can bring, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not that technical into the smart appliances I have. I see. Uh, so um, I might have a smart TV, mm -hmm. and that's it. I think. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't have any Alexa or any Siri or any um, anything. Um, yeah, maybe probably the latest acquisition uh, is a pair of uh, Bluetooth wireless ear earbuds. Okay, but that's still like uh, not smart. Yeah, yeah exactly, right? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I also think something that is making it, that it will be a complication is that everything is becoming centralized to the cell phone. And I remember I visited my my cousin back at home, yeah, and in in his apartment he can open the the door with his cell phone, and yeah, that's in Panama, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I was like, okay, that's there goes a lot of security issues there, because I mean, of course, if you someone steal your cell phone, it's like the whole package, the whole the yeah. whole package. It's like if you lost it or whatever, then get the whole package. You can open all the doors. All the information can control everything, and it's cool. Okay, he, some you can open the the house, and I mean it was good because we arrived first, and we could enter the apartment before, so we were not waiting outside. And then he could turn on the air conditioning, and everything from his cell phone before he arrived, which sounds cool. But I mean, there is a whole security issues there. Yeah, definitely, because you don't have any like. Uh to factor authentication, you <laughs> just uh, if you have the cell phone and the app is open mm -hmm. and the app uh, doesn't uh, require a forced login every time you open the app, then you have the app open yeah. and yeah. then you can just access the door. Um, actually, for the company I work for now, we also have uh, a system like that uh, where I just have to click like open door with an app yeah. and it, it, it opens, uh, I think it's via Bluetooth. and um, yeah, it's the same kind of worry uh, sometimes that you can have, like uh, if someone has access to uh, a phone or like mm -hmm. a way of cracking that um, device. Yeah, right. You don't have to even have access. the physical phone, right? Yeah. In theory, I don't know, like how yeah. how deep is the protection, but yeah, I think it depends. It depends on the on the technology you use mm -hmm. uh, because maybe uh, some um, companies use Bluetooth. Uh, there are other IoT mm -hmm. protocols, uh, um, and depending on how you act, uh, um, activate devices, mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of like it depends. There are many security steps that you can, of course, breach as in any as a technological or IT system. But this, this might be a technical question, but do you think, like in general, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or having their own internal net, what do you think will be the most safe approach? I guess internal net, right? Yeah. Well, for uh, I mean, you mean oral or for IoT? Um, for for yeah, for IoT in general. For IoT, I think uh, I mean there are many protocols now um, that um, are kind of like um, evolving in time. I think one uh, protocol that might be uh, uh, safe, uh, um, a good one is LoRa One. Uh, okay. So basically. Uh, um, long range mm -hmm. uh, devices. Uh, it's kind of like this protocol that enables uh, to read uh, devices uh, in a long, um, um, uh, over a basically long um, um, mileage or mm -hmm. kilometers, five to ten kilometers. Uh, um, that's one protocol that I think uh, is going to be established. And there are many others that can be used mm -hmm. that uh, don't have that reach. Uh, like uh, narrow band IoT or LTE M, mm -hmm. um, yeah, depends on the on the or ultra wide band, um, for mm -hmm. example, uh, NFC. We use NFC for credit card payments. Okay. Uh, basically, when you put your credit card mm -hmm. in the uh, in the contactless uh, reader, that's also IoT NFC and your mm -hmm. field communication. Uh, there's also RFID, radio frequency identification. 
<laughs> so in the realm of I IoT, there are many protocols with different use cases. I see. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. yeah, Bluetooth could be also considered as one. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's interesting. I didn't know there were so many different options, but yeah. Yeah, there are many. I um, think. And each has like a unique use case. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I, I think some issue that, like, especially for example, for with cars now, cars are now becoming all completely like basically a computer. Like everything will be controlled with the computer. And okay, so it's interesting, so it's cool that everything can be controlled with the computer. But at the same time, it goes with many issues of what computers have right now, right? Like updates, for example. Like if you have a Windows computer, you know you have to update this every two weeks or whatever at, at the most random times, and with cars, I know this is going to be an issue. Like this, of course, these softwares are not perfect, so they will need to be checked every now and then for updates. And it will be, it's not its not like updating a computer. You can just leave it in your room and you update it. For a car, it's way more complicated because first, you cannot update the car while it's using it, so you have to park it. Second, it probably will require some time and good connection, so you cannot be like in the middle of nowhere and you need also to be charging. So if you have an electric car and you need to be updating the car, you have to connect it to be charged and it has to be in the area that you have good connection, have to be parked, and at the same time you have to leave it open because there is a security issue that if you are inside, for example, and the car somehow the update doesn't work properly, then you can get trapped inside because everything is controlled by the computer. So, I mean, you got so many issues here for just what used to be just driving a car that i mean it's gonna create a big headache to people right yeah that's yeah, uh, funny that, the, that you pointed that out because um there was actually one case in shanghai mm -hmm. uh with the uh, one of the competitors of tesla that um uh, th this guy was driving his car in one of the busiest uh, uh, avenues in shanghai mm -hmm. and suddenly the car decided to do an update <laughs> In the middle of the road, uh, he, the car just stopped. He was driving and he didn't even decide. <laughs> oh, like, he no. didn't even decide. Okay, I want to update now or anything. Yeah, yeah. The car just decided it. The car stopped in the middle of the avenue. Everybody was honking like, "Oh, get out! Get out of the way!" And he could not even get out of the car oh, no. because the update was in progress. The software update uh, was uh, in progress. Uh, so the guy was trapped inside. Oh no! <laughs> and I that mean, happened that's... in Shanghai, uh, and no one could get that uh, uh, guy outside of the car. Yeah, I mean, uh, you don't know what's happening too, right? Yeah. He just like yeah. stop. And he's like doing like this and you, yeah, <laughs> but this, <laughs> what's going yeah, on with this guy, right? Over, yeah. <laughs> oh no, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, at least nothing bad happened. Like the person didn't get like in an accident or. No, 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 it just was the, it was just the update, but still like um, it's kind of um, nerve wracking being inside a car without being able to yeah, go yeah. outside and it's like <laughs> exactly yeah uh, uh, well, that would be super I would be super scary that yeah happens. that's the thing that will also make people more concerned to get into these products yeah yeah and and, and, and I don't think this is a, an evolution that's gonna stop uh, cars are gonna get even more and more sensors mm -hmm. uh, more chips um, more connected to the internet and more vulnerable, and not just yeah. cars, but any infrastructure, like even uh, um, water treatment plants, uh, electricity grids. Yes, yeah, true. Um, right? Yeah, as, as as we migrate everything to the cloud or mm -hmm. to the internet, um, there are some uh, vulnerability components mm -hmm. that have to be uh, addressed. Yeah, that, that's that's true. I mean, yeah, the vulnerability for I mean, uh, water treatment too, right? Like electricity, like. Yeah. 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 Like like basic like um, human uh, um, yeah needs uh, also food uh, yeah, true, supply right? chains uh, uh, smart farming agriculture um, as we migrate everything uh, uh, to the internet uh, and digitalize every object mm -hmm. uh, then um, yeah um, there are many other ways uh, bad people uh, can take advantage of that. I mean, I guess, for example, like, let's say you have a a big plantation and it's all by computer, by machines, and it's regulated by the amount of water and exposure to, I don't know, different chemicals to use. And just someone is vulnerable to someone hacking that or, or, or just a mistake, right? You mm -hmm. can just reduce the amount of water by a mistake and then the whole the whole crop 
of the season it's gone that right is, like yeah, you that is, yeah. so it could, could be enough to the to stop the growing of the of the plants i mean yeah, that's okay course. that's a And something like similar happened last year in the U.S. Uh, with this colonial pipeline, uh, where the entire um, oil supply of the uh, East Coast um, yep. was uh, uh, put at risk or even stopped. Yeah, okay. like entire Washington uh, coast, New York, everything was kind of like um, uh, for days or weeks. I remember uh, not supplied with oil uh, because there was some ransomware mm -hmm. um, attack, and and this ta and this um, attack it was basically the software that that was compromised mm -hmm. uh, or the systems. Um, but it could also happen with sensors. Uh, you mm -hmm. can manipulate sensors. Uh, for example, yeah, one example that could mm, that I can think of was uh, this um, kind of famous example of. Uh, the Iranian uh, uh, Iranian um, uh, nuclear uh, program, mm -hmm. um, where I think it was Israel that infected the the, the nuclear um, the facility mm -hmm. with a virus, and the centrifuge started to spin like crazy, and all the uranium and rich uranium started to basically, uh, yeah, um, get bad, and uh, that shut down the entire program for like weeks or months. Mm. I see. Because the centrifuge acted on uh, on, on, on some uh, parameters that uh, the virus inflicted that were not there, uh, captured by the sensors that yep. were artificially kind of like uh, uh, injected, and they started to just spin, 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 and yeah. I mean, but yeah, that's, I mean, I, I also think the proper maintenance of like sensors, right? I mean. Probably you don't even need the virus for that. If you have sensors that have been there for five, ten years, I mean, it's super expensive, I guess, to replace them. How often? And then humidity, you know, changes in temperature, salt conditions, everything just affect the sensors, right? Of course. That's yeah, a... humidity is, um, yeah, um, anything, uh, acidification of the, mm -hmm. of the um, air, Anything, and um, that's why also devices have calibration periods. Mm -hmm. For example, in Germany, uh, water meters, heat meters, um, heat cost allocator meters have a calibration period of six years or 10 years in heat cost allocators. And every six years, these water meters or heat meters have to be changed mm -hmm. because they get uh, kind of like what you said, uh, uh, um, uh, like torn down by usage and yep. then they are like they, they cannot uh, record the consumption like it is uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because of the uh, of the usage mm -hmm. and that's why uh, every uh, um, every year every uh, so a time um, now and then has to be changed yeah have to be replaced with that replaced yeah. yeah I mean it's a bit scary too right like the uh, oh how many things could go wrong I mean there's a, of course a lot of benefits But so many, many things, things can go can go wrong. Yeah, but I think people need to know about it, right? Like, it's just things are going to come and one has to be prepared for that. I mean, even in the case with, with cars, right? Like, we were talking about this person who got trapped in Shanghai. Like, <laughs> yeah. like for even for repairing the wheel that before you could do with anyone, you would not be able to repair it by yourself. Because you will need, like, a... Well, I'm not sure for wheels, but probably the other things. Anything else, like, things are, like, you didn't need like a specialist you will have to need it because you have to access to the computer so they allow that you change the specific part and then then the computer can calibrate it again or whatever they need to do i mean that's yeah, yeah true yeah like like cars uh in the example of cars they have made this uh transition to be uh, so um digital uh that you cannot even fix them anymore by yourself like you used to mm -hmm. 10 or uh, 15 years ago where mm -hmm. you could actually use uh, a, a mechanic or mm -hmm. uh, engineer knowledge uh to repair uh fix or um, enhance a car mm -hmm. and now it's everything via uh yeah, software updates or uh, yeah software calibration or software commands mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So many things are coming in yeah. with this, right? And going back to you, what you just yeah, said yeah. about that, many things can go wrong. Uh, yeah, it's very um, uh, um, good to mention mm -hmm. that IoT is basically we don't just have software, uh -huh. uh, the software side, but we also have the hardware side, uh -huh. 
and the connectivity and oh. everything has to work uh, well mm -hmm. for the uh, data to be captured. So if you have amazing software, but the sensors are uh, bad or don't capture any data, then the data I will have in the software mm -hmm. is going to be useless. Uh, if I have bad software, then I cannot visualize the data uh, I'm capturing with my good sensor. Mm -hmm. And if there's bad connectivity, then I cannot even have anything because how the data is going to be transmitted uh, mm -hmm. from hardware to software. So all these three components of an IoT architecture need to um, be thought beforehand if, uh, or before implementing a project, and they need to be thought well uh, mm -hmm. to, for them to work uh, uh, flawlessly. So in terms, I mean, this is quite interesting, right? Because not like probably the company that do the software is not the same company that do the sensors, that do the other hardware. Like you need to have a lot of relationship between these mm -hmm. these companies. Yeah. And, that, and that brings a new question, right? Like this market, I mean, of course, going to be like trillions of, of euros. That, that's for sure. Um, what would you think is According like the... According to McKinsey, it's going to be worth in 2025, by 2025, 11.1 trillion. So yes. The what? The whole market of? IoT, yeah. Oh, 11, how much? 11.1 trillion Poof. dollars. Okay, yeah. I mean, I, I guess that's for anyone that it's either a young person that is just trying to see what career they will go or someone trying to invest in the company. Do you, do you think there's some help? I mean, I guess, Many good companies will come, and many also startups that will not be as successful. You think there is some held? I mean, of course, this is not like investing recommendation, or, or we're trying to say, oh, put your money here. But what do you think? Since your experience in working different companies, are some held indicators of okay, these ones are going the right way, or this might be like, or or, or maybe they're gonna be fighting in a where there are too many sharks. I think uh, I, 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 it's very difficult for me to answer that question because everything is so new now and the companies, even big ones, are still kind of like exploring these mm -hmm. uh, business areas. And I think it's, it's to be seen. Mm -hmm. I, um, also because uh, I, I feel uh, or I think there's many regulation that's missing. Um, mm -hmm. IoT has not been regulated as much as uh, other um uh, technological uh, innovations, and um, besides technolo technology, I think interoperability between systems is going to play a huge role too. Um, if uh, systems are interoperable, um, I think IoT solutions can uh, be more scalable and be more useful. And it's to be seen if companies or some big companies are uh, keen to um, give away their competitive advantage um, to open their systems, to offer uh, uh, um, common uh, or um, adhere to common standards, uh, because that's how actually how uh, IoT, an IoT ecosystem can be built. With, with interoperable devices, mm -hmm. uh, where like you have an open platform where you can uh, integrate devices from any manufacturer, mm -hmm. and that's why it's difficult to say if there's one company that's gonna take I see. Uh, the, the the entire pie. I think the pie is gonna be uh, huge. Um, so so you think the idea would be? Sorry to interrupt. It would be like yeah. if I'm a hardware company, the best thing would be that my hardware can be with any software. Yes, yes, that's, that's instead of making actually, like close market, right? Exactly. Yes, that's uh, 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 not just from the business per perspective, and I think uh, also like many uh, hardware uh, companies are, are realizing that they could mm -hmm. offer many um, um, additional um, or added value services mm -hmm. on top of just the goods they produce. So they could offer also a platform where you can track. Uh, the usage usage of, of the device mm -hmm. um, you're selling, and you can also sell it as a service. Then you have more, more uh, an additional source of I income, see. and you also then enable uh, uh, another uh, company that produces that platform to have also income, and then you create more and more uh, uh, market share. I see. I mean, that's interesting, right? I mean, I, I guess. I mean, this is also a little bit scary too, but. 
all this data that's being collected could also be used as a credit score for yeah, people. Yeah, a credit score and, and, and uh, it depends on the data, of course. And also a very good question. Um, um, I think uh, it needs to be some time address. I don't know if it can be answered easily is uh, whom belongs this data? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, um, yeah, it, does it belong to the hardware uh, manufacturer? Does it belong to the software company mm -hmm. that um, uh, stores and visualizes the data? Does it belong to the third party that integrates both the software and the, and the hardware? Mm -hmm. Does it belong to the end user? Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's true, right? Like, that's yeah. uh, how regulation should... I mean, we still have on time, right? Like, for regulations to come to yeah. protect people from that. Um, protect the people and also create like a, a framework uh, within like where, where our, like parameters mm -hmm. are um, I um, I basically uh, laid out mm -hmm. um, and you can see that for example with uh, electric vehicles uh, a big big issue for the implementation or the rollout of electric vehicles is for me infrastructure mm -hmm. so where where uh, like charging basically yeah. charging mm -hmm. stations and uh, now there are like four standards like tesla has their own standard then mm -hmm. we have like chademo or like j1171777 or um uh, the other one i don't remember and uh, css i'm sorry um no ccs uh, that's standard and sorry what's um, ccs that's four standards uh for um electric like charging electrical vehicles oh okay the block the uh -huh. block has like a different shape and of course like um, ac has to uh, uh, be converted to dc and uh, this can be done with via kind of like four standards and um in the united states there are many cases for example where you are, are driving a tesla and you don't have a supercharger uh in the next 200 kilometers but you have a chademo uh, charge charging station and you cannot charge your tesla in that charging station so what do you do and in the in the European Union, uh, there was this regulation that was passed where um, uh, they said that every charging station has to have a CCS adapter, um, and, and that enables kind of like uh, the user, the end user, to be able to, um, 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 yeah, take advantage of the entire technology because it doesn't make sense to not be able to charge your vehicle for like hundreds of kilometers. Mm -hmm. um, and in that sense, uh, in like um, creating a framework uh, for interoperability is for me key for any uh, solution, technological solution. And I, and I also think like coming back to this, I mean, it's not just which type of charger, but just also like everything surrounding that, right? Like how, how long it takes to charge a car? Of course, yeah, like the, the battery, like um, now, um, Batteries are gonna be produced from another type of lithium, and that's gonna um, uh, make the battery more uh, a bit heavier. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's gonna charge faster, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's also some. It's like you need a whole infrastructure, battery. right? Because I mean, gasoline, of course, it takes you what five minutes to fill your car, and then you're gone. But if you need, let's say, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, or even more, mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of cars you need to, I mean, you probably need to charge more often than than gasoline. That's that might be an issue as well then you need bigger places and what do you do with the people as well or for example with the updates again right if you're updating your car <laughs> and like <laughs> you're connected to the el electricity while it's being updated you want to be a place first of a safe because you have to leave your car open right so you cannot be like anywhere in the city or whatever you have to be a place that leaves somehow safe that you leave your car open for while it's being uh updated and second is like what are you going to do with yourself right either mm -hmm. it's close to your place or you just I mean, there's a whole business coming in, right? Like, we do a charging station, and there's a cinema, so, hey, mm. let's watch this Batman movie <laughs> while you update your car for the next four hours. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that could be, yeah, as like uh, some kind of, like, uh, additional um, business models that can be, yeah. But I think in the end, like, if, if I would have an electric car, I would really like to charge fast. Like, I would go, I would like to go from point A to point B as fast as I can. Uh -huh. And I think that's why also electrical uh, vehicle companies, uh, electric vehicle companies, 
are really investing a lot in R and D to uh, get that time down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, also something that is understand is like these hybrid models. They will be mostly electric, but we'll still have gasoline. So in case there is an emergency, then you can still go by gasoline to be enough, so you can go, so you don't have to be pick up in the middle of nowhere. Which I think is an interesting model. Like, of course, it's not completely getting out of of fossil fuels, but I mean, how long you can keep this gasoline? And I'm, I'm not an expert to know mm. how long you keep it, but if it's just an emergency, maybe you can just keep it for months, months, and you only use it once, maybe because of something happened, but if not, you just have it there. I mean, that's also an inter- inter- interesting model. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. It will make more people confident too, right? Like, oh, I can go and do a long trip to a different town because if something happens, I know I can rely on gasoline, then people will accept uh, more of the technology. Yeah, of course, um, that's a very good point. And um, yeah, of course, the key like or the or the goal is at, at some point to be full uh, reliable, fully on uh, fully reliable on uh, ele- electricity uh-huh. um, for cars. Um, but for the meantime, I think it's a good uh, uh, solution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something also coming back to this software and hardware connection. Something I found interesting. I heard, for example, you, are you familiar with Peloton? Peloton? Yes, the bike. The, the, the bike, yeah. Uh, yeah. What I understood yeah, is like the new CEO, he wants to open for any type of software to use their bikes and their products. Mm. And I think now there's more companies coming doing similar things. There's even a rowing company coming in. Like you have this rowing machine, but it's also like somehow with a platform that people can engage with each other. And it is cool because it opens the market for people you know, producing software that could be more interesting and then there's some type of competition. So, because I mean, before, if you have one software, one hardware, it's too hard to compete, right? It's like you have to build everything. But now, okay, we live in both open for both directions, right? Like Peloton can also have competition, someone else doing cheaper bikes that also integrate the softwares and the other way around, better softwares that are more interesting for people that integrate more things to be... I mean, similar with like like a cell phone is right with like Android, you have apps from every company, but you still have the same phone. Like the Android is what from Google and then Samsung and then the other companies can use the same program, but then any other company can do apps. I think this is like probably the most interesting interesting, business model. Yeah, very interesting uh, uh, way of looking at it. And uh, definitely I think there's gonna be way more solutions into that uh, area, Uh, for example, uh, um, there's uh, one company I don't remember the name that uh, for the real estate industry uh, here in Germany um, or there's the, for Germany, Austria, and Switzerland region that they offer like kind of like a marketplace for um, real estate software solutions. Uh-huh. So if you buy like a subscription for this company, you can access this marketplace where you have all these companies uh, that offer, uh, for example. Um, um, uh, real estate management solutions or energy <coughs> tracking solutions mm-hmm. or anything related to a uh, real estate you can find like a marketplace of like mm, applications that you can then integrate into your own and customize uh, uh, to your own uh, solution and then you have like a dashboard with oh i have a uh, real estate management uh, and i have like uh, CO, um, um, carbon emissions uh, in my uh, real estate uh, uh, tracking solution. And then you have also energy consumption tracking solution. Um, mm-hmm. You have like a wide array, uh, um, a wide range array of solutions uh, uh, that you can access through this marketplace. And there are companies already offering uh, kind of like those business solutions. I mean, that, that's good, right? Like this is... Yeah, I mean, all these... Inter- Real Cube, it's the name. What's the name? Real Cube. Real Cube. Yeah, I mean, Real just to think Real all this Cube. integration of data coming in together, how everything will be managed like that. Yeah, I think that's that's quite interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I heard you are going hiking next week. Yes, this I am. Is the... <laughs> I am leaving on Saturday, uh-huh. uh, finally for uh, vacations. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, Tanzania. It's, oh, cool. it's the goal. And I'm going to climb the Kilimanjaro. Oh, um, that's crazy. Yeah, that's nice. that's kind of like a dream I have had for uh, 
ever, uh, my bucket list. Yeah. And yeah, I'm excited because. Um, how, how long it takes that to to climb it? Like. I'm going. I'm doing the the longer route. Uh -huh. uh, it's called the Lemosho route, and it's eight days. Oh. But there are shorter routes, like like there are like five. You can do it even in three to four days, but. I would not recommend that because then you have not many, uh, not much time to acclimate to the high altitude, and um, that's kind of like a problem uh, many people have. Yeah, I right. have also like yeah. yeah, like the last big, big, big hike I did was three years ago before uh, the pandemic, of course, <laughs> mm. uh, when I was in Nepal and I did the Annapurna circuit, and I was on up to 5,500 meters. Oh. And when I climbed to the, uh, when I crossed the line of 5,000, um, that's crazy. It started seeing black. I oh, know. Um, I could not even coordinate what I was thinking in my brain with my mouth, and I could not even talk. Like I had something in my head, yeah. and I could not communicate, and I had to just sit down and relax because if I would have panicked, uh, it would have been worse. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. High, high altitude is, is yeah. I see. It's oh. a thing. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is legal, but can you go to a doctor and ask for like EPO? You know what EPO is like? Yeah, or Dymox. Uh, there, like many hikers use Dymox. Yeah, I mean, you're not um, competing. It's just like a recreational thing. I think it shouldn't be so bad if they give you that yeah. for hiking. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I think many people use Dymox. In uh -huh. Nepal, I saw many people using Dymox, but, but I, I refuse to use it because... Um, once you start using Dymox, your kind of capability to withstand a high altitude uh, gets lower. I see. Uh, so you can be, you become dependent on on that kind mm -hmm. of like uh, pill to, to 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 be able to hike at that uh, those um, uh, and, and and blood transfusions. <laughs> I don't think there are blood, the, blood transfusions in Tanzania. No, no, but like in, I think, in, in yeah, yeah, of your own. I think it was like these bike ah. bikers, they will just collect their own blood and then put it back after a while, and then like, yeah. Really, I didn't yeah, know that. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I don't think I have. Uh, I, I, I would. I, I don't think I have en enough space in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> no, you. <laughs> <for blood. laughs> you, you carry the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 no, this is just, just, it's just satire here. It's not, it's not true. I'm not, I'm not recommending to you to do that. But in the hypothetical uh, case, then uh, I, I'm going slow. That's like the, the best uh, um, advice I can give uh, to anyone who would try something like this is just like walk slow. But you, you have like you carry the food for the eight days, or is there yes. like place to stop to buy? I don't know. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. But I'm going with a crew, so there's like one guide. Uh -huh. Um, and one, um, and also uh, one porter and uh -huh. one uh, other guy who is gonna be like, uh, yeah, it's cook. And we're basically a team of three or four. Uh, How much people. water you have to take? Um, I have my camel bag or three liters, but that just lasts for one day. And um, I think you like in the lower part of Kilimanjaro, of the Kilimanjaro is like basically jungle. And there are some, I, I assume, like rivers or like um, uh, streams of water. And as the higher you go, then there, I hope there's snow that you can melt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see. <laughs> this is very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Huh. So, I mean, it's eight days of whatever food and water you have. And you have to pay for like an insurance or something, like a helicopter to pick you up if you collapse or something or I do a donkey a I don't know to pick you up. <laughs> a donkey a donkey to carry me down yeah, yeah right <laughs> um I I have a travel insurance a, a German one uh, but it's valid for an entire trip so I just um I didn't buy it specifically for mm -hmm. Kilimanjaro uh yeah should be fine okay cool I mean that's Probably coming with a lot of stories after that. Eight days. <laughs> Eight days, and um, I'm staying a bit longer in Tanzania. Uh -huh. uh, doing safari. Uh, I hope I'm, I'm gonna see the. There's like this beast, uh, wild beast migration, uh, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope to see that like a bunch of like thousands, dozens, dozens of thousands of animals like just tramping on each other and running from one place to the other. Like, oh. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> oh. 
uh, yeah, and then the final uh, mm -hmm. trip uh, within the trip mm -hmm. is uh, diving in San Sibar, like this island uh, off the coast of, of Tanzania. Uh -huh. So I also have diving license. I haven't done it in a while since I moved to Germany. So I'm super excited about mm -hmm. going to dive, going diving again. Have you been preparing yourself like physically, like training a lot, like running and like swimming and like eating healthy or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have been training for the last three months, running maybe one hour a day, um, eating healthy. Yeah. Uh, if I eat at my place. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. If I, if I go out, then it's a bit <laughs> difficult to control myself and. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm just doing just the regular stuff like uh, just running uh, one hour a day, uh, eating good and sleeping and resting and yeah, just I think mm, being in good shape is very important. But like uh, what I experienced in Nepal is also like the mindset or mentality mm -hmm. uh, is also key. Like 80% is the mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, like being a good spirit, positive. Yeah, you really have to mind. want to be there, first of all, I think. <laughs> you, want to be there. you want to be there, right? Like, I, I think it's to, yeah. the first step. Have, yeah, and you need to be able to take shit. <laughs> yeah. Are you <laughs> planning it's to... not going to be like a pleasant uh, vacation with hotels. Yeah, yeah, and yeah that's true. And, you know, it's just going to be uh, rough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to find like a tree for, yeah doing your own thing right like yeah. <laughs> no no toilet no toilet right like toilet paper I, I i take it's like my most valuable item in any backpack is the toilet paper i see <laughs> is it like a spe like a like a special one that is like no a normal one a normal, like one. A normal one you have to bring it back <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> i don't know like no sip luck yeah I <laughs> Yeah, maybe I, I don't know. Yeah, I see. I see. I, I, I mean, what about you? Also, a DJ, right? This is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, a... yeah. In my in my free time, I really I really like to produce music. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been producing music for the last six years, and before that, I played in bands, uh, the guitar, the bass. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm just basically focused on producing. I actually, now that you say that, uh -huh. I'm releasing a, um, um, an EP next Monday. Okay. Uh, it's like uh, five or six songs, lo-fi beats. Oh, uh, nice. Song, uh, with very tropical flavor, like Panamanian flavor. Oh, nice, nice. Where we come from. And yeah, it's going to be released on the 4th of July, exactly in the day where, where I start climbing. <laughs> climbing okay, down. okay. maybe we put the, the links below for everyone interested in yeah, yeah, getting sure. a different yeah. different vibes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ah, that's, that's very interesting, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think, anything else you want to add, Adriano, or? Uh, just to say thank you for having me, it was super interesting, this talk, and yeah, I wish we can have more yeah for sure for sure i think after you you climb the kilimanjaro you probably there's a lot of lessons there le <laughs> lessons to learn and things you will I hope. yeah yeah but i think this is i really like this like you you know challenging your own body and mind to do things you want to do and i don't know if hiking kilimanjaro is for me but i think this you know putting your body to the limits i think it's it's, it's a good thing right like i think we well, have to be careful of course but if one if one do it smart then I think after that you're just like oh everything else is like who cares right like I just climbed the Kilimanjaro right like, like oh I'm gonna feel good about myself exactly like, someone yeah. tells you something like oh did you climb the Kilimanjaro ah no okay so get out of, get out of here <laughs> just leave me alone leave me alone but cool thank you and I hope you guys like it and thank you again for being here I think it, it was super interesting and yeah and I wish you the best time there and have fun and make it back <laughs> yeah. <I'll try. laughs> and then thank you everyone for listening and ciao ciao thank you bye